Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to fix the system servers exception blue screen of death some of you guys might be getting in Windows 10. So this tutorial is going to be very straightforward and we're going to just jump straight into it. I'm assuming you're not able to boot into Windows 10. You'll have to use your Windows 10 installation media CD or DVD or USB stick to boot your computer to the setup files. Now please keep in mind that I'm not going to actually go through that in this tutorial. However, I did make a video, I believe last year, about how to download the media creation tool if you did not actually use it or maybe you accidentally lost it while you were upgrading to Windows 10 and maybe you got rid of it after you upgraded because why do you really need to hold on to that once you've already upgraded, right? So I'm I'm going to put a video annotation link probably in this video as well as in the description of the video to direct you guys to that video and then we're going to simply just boot your computer off the CD or DVD. I also have a video dedicated to that as well so rather than just being more redundant and just throwing in unnecessary steps anybody who needs help to get to this point is more than happy to um, watch those individual videos but to everybody else we have the Windows 10 setup file on the screen. Um, after you're done selecting which language you want to install and the keyboard input, just select Next. And once you're done doing that, instead of clicking on the Install Now button in the middle of the page, you want to left click on the button that says Repair Your Computer. And so what you want to do first is left click on the Troubleshoot tile. And then you want to left click on advanced options. And then finally select command prompt to the top right. And just be patient, this will take a moment. Okay, so at this point you want to select the administrative account on your computer. Um, my administrative account happens to be named computer, so I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to insert the password for that user, so just be patient here. Okay, so once we have our elevated command prompt, we're going to start by typing in the letter C, followed by a colon sign, and then hit enter on your keyboard. Once you've done that, now it's going to get kind of interesting. So we are going to start by typing in BCD edit space forward slash set space now with the curly brackets you want to type in default and then you want to do an end curly bracket and then you want to type in and then you want to do a space after that and then type boot menu policy legacy and make sure it's typed in exactly how I have it spelled out too or it won't work so once you're done typing that in, hit enter on your keyboard so we can see that our operation was completed successfully. In case you guys are wondering, this will actually enable the advanced boot options menu when you press F8 when you're booting into Windows. Okay, so at this point I'm just going to type exit and then I just did enter. And now I'm going to exit and continue to Windows 10. Instead, I'm going to actually try to get into the boot menu as the computer is starting up. So depending on your computer's motherboard manufacturer, it might be a little bit different for you guys what key you tap on your keyboard. I want to get into our setup for the BIOS. So I'm going to use my arrows on my keyboard to scroll over to the boot tab and then I'm going to hit enter. And then using my arrow keys again, my up and down arrow keys, I'm going to select the hard drive wherever position is on this list. And then I'm going to click on the plus sign on my keyboard to move it to the top position. And then at this point, once you've moved the hard drive to the first boot device, you can click on F10 on your keyboard and then hit enter to save our configuration changes. This should restart. So at this point, I would recommend going into Windows, uh, I'd recommend going underneath programs and features 
and uninstalling any recent Windows updates you might have installed that created this issue. So, I hope this brief tutorial helped you guys out, and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.